Hey everyone, this is Usman from Coding Galore. In this video, we'll transform our RackPick calendar from this to this. Right now, we know that if you use RackPick calendar by default, it looks like this, and that is not really a good look. We have options to customize everything in this calendar, and we will take this step by step, and we'll see in what ways can we customize the calendar and how we can do it. First of all, I would like to change the styles of the headers and the time slots and all the colors of the text, etc. So let's do that. So in order to target the style, I will use the RBC header class. So I'll say that the color of the text should be white. The font size should be 14 pixel important. Then I want that the header text should be at the center. So I'll say it should have display flex, line item center, justify content center, Let's give it a height of 36 pixels. And finally, I would want that I give it a background of this particular color. So now if I look, you can see that the header has a very nice look to it. And it's also got a little padding on it and it's looking very nice. Now we have got this uh, row for displaying the events that are on all day. So I don't in this particular example want this row to be shown because i wouldn't have events which would go all day so i want to hide it so in order to do that i will use this class i will say um, rbc all day cell and display none so basically then that particular row for all day goes away now another style we need to apply is for the today class so right now we can see that for the today day 25 and sunday we can see that the style is not really looking that nice so i want to change that so first of all, for editing the color of the today header, I will use this class and I will change this background color to a green color, which is cool. Now you can see that it looks quite better. Now I want to style the time slots. Right now you can see that the time slots are white. I would want to add that color and also the font color of these times. So let's do that. So in order to do target the time slot, I will use the RBC time slot class. And then for the time slots, I'm giving it a slight light purplish color. And now you can see the time in the time slots have got a nice purplish color and also i will give it a z index of one why we will take a look at it later in the tutorial when i will implement a context menu also i would want to give it a slight bluish background color to the all the time slots so now you can see that the entire time slots are light blue color which is pretty, looking pretty good the events are hidden because I've given it a Z index of one. We will fix that in the next section. Okay, so the basic styling of the calendar is done. Now we would like to implement custom components for events so that we can have different components for different event types and also better looking event components rather than the default ones. Okay, so first of all, the class for the event is RBC event. And if you are using background events, then the class for that is RBC background event. So we'll target both. And first of all, we will set it Z index to two so that at least we can see it. Now you can see that they are visible. Now there are some other styles which I would like to add here as well, but first we'll use a custom component for the event and then I will apply this style so that you can know why I'm applying those styles. So first of all, I will go here and I would create a components object. Let's give it an any type and I will pass these components here. Now for passing a custom component for the event, we can use the event key. So if I want to pass the same component everywhere, I would basically use just event. If I want to pass uh, the event component for different views, so for month, it's, it should be a different component. For week, it should be a different component. Then I will basically do week. And then inside that week, there would be an object with the event key. And then I would assign the component to that particular key and not just event. So event basically says that I would want to use this component for all views. In this case, I want to do that. Now basically I'm getting the event prop in this event component. So I will say const data is equal to event net data. Where am I getting the data from? Basically, if you look at the events array I'm getting, I'm basically passing the start and dates, which are mandatory. And then I'm passing some custom data for the event in the data key. And then inside that data key, if it's an appointment, then basically it's an appointment key and an object. And if it's another type of event, in this case, a block out, I have the key block out. So I will basically use this key to see which particular component do I need to render. So I will say if data appointment, now I have two components here, appointment event and block out event. I will go through them when I display them. So I will say appointment event and I will pass the appointment here. I will say data dot appointment. Here I will say if data block out, then I want to return blockout event, blockout, and I will pass this 
block out object here and then if nothing then i want to return null now if i come here you can see that i am displaying some custom components here but there is some problem here first of all there is some padding here so right now the default component isn't completely hidden and that is you know obviously weird looking and also this label for the time is displaying and i don't want to display that so we basically need to cater for these things first of all i want to remove the padding so i will say padding zero pixel important and border none important and you can see that it gets rid of the padding and the border and it is looking slightly better now i want to remove this label which is present with the default component you can basically target the label using this rbc event label class so i will basically just do none important and now you can see that the label is gone as well and i am displaying my own components which is pretty cool now another thing is by default the events are consuming 90 percent of the width of the entire slot and not 100 percent so i want to edit that as well i want that events take 100 percent of the width and not just 90 percent so that i will target this class i will say width should be 100 percent now you can see that the events take 100 percent width now i'll basically walk you through what these components are i am basically using chakra ui to build these components you can use any library you want and that is why i'm not focusing very much on how i made the component because you can use any library and every library has a different way of making things but basically it's just a div with some heights height 100 percent color black and then here i have a flex container and then i'm displaying the location and resource i'm getting from the data object and then here i'm splitting the address by this return character and i'm just displaying it nothing fancy and also i'm displaying the background based on the status so i have an enum here if the status is p this would be the background color if the status would be ci this would be the background color and the statuses are basically coming from here so status is p status is ci basically i'm using these statuses to show different background colors and you can display one type of component but then also within that component customize it based on whatever your requirement is and that is power of the custom component also i'm displaying another component for another type of event that is block out and this is a pretty simple component it's just a light background flex container and i'm displaying the name of the block out in the center by using align items in this y content center pretty basic stuff now as you saw in the first clip of this tutorial i would like to make a custom toolbar right now you can see that there is a toolbar present but i mean you can change some things here like you can you know change the styling etc but you can't change the functionality you can't add your own functionality in this particular toolbar there is a prop to hide the toolbar in drag pick calendar and then you can build your own toolbar and then using the props like view date etc you can control that particular calendar with your own state and everything so we will do that so that we can add more functionality to this calendar like zooming in and selecting date using another calendar to change the date of this calendar so let's do that so the first step is that i want to hide the toolbar so i will just do toolbar false now you can see that toolbar is gone now let's add my own toolbar okay so now i can see that i have added the toolbar now i won't discuss what i have used to implement this toolbar I have used Chakra UI, but basically, obviously, you will be using your own libraries like Material UI, Bootstrap, etc. You will use your own logic for building these components, and everything would be different, like props, etc. So I'm not really focusing on that. I'll focus only on the logic that needs to be added in these particular components, so that you can control the calendar with it and make it more functional. So I will just talk about that. So first of all, we have these uh, buttons: day, week, month. Now, obviously, we want that just like these buttons were working in the case of when the toolbar was present i want that it works the same way in this case so when i click on day i show the day view when i click on week the week view opens and so on so basically within the calendar we have a view prop so in this view prop we can pass stuff so right now let's say if i pass day you can see that i'm viewing the day view if i pass month here then you know month view is shown and so on and so forth so i can use this view prop to control the view of the calendar so whenever i click on that particular button i will basically change the view from this view prop so let's do that so here basically i would initialize the state for view and i would say here that um, id is basically either month week or day and this is basically an array so i'll pass the id in set view based on which button i click and then i'm passing the view here so if i refresh now you can see that i click on the particular buttons and the particular view gets shown 
now i also wanted to show that i have selected a particular button so that i can know that i have selected this view so in order to do that i have basically used chakra's ui logic i will i have said that if id is equal to view then i want to have this background color in white color and on hover this background color in color obviously in your case it can be anything so now i want to implement some logic here basically i want that whenever i click on this particular arrow i go one day one week one month in the forward direction based on the view i've selected and similarly if i click on this button i go one day week month before based on the view i've selected so now let's add the logic for that okay so first of all i want to have the state for date so i'll say date set date is equal to use state and then i will have a date so i'll say 2022 10 10 and i'll convert it into date because the react pick calendar expects date in date format and not moment and then i'll pass the date here here i will basically based on the view i would add one day if the view is day if the week a view is week i will add one week etc so the logic is simple i would say if view is equal to views dot day let's say i want to set the date to i would wrap the date with moment i will add one day and then two date so now i would add the logic for that now i click on this particular icon you can see that you know the days are going forward so let's add the same logic for the week and month so basically let's copy this two times here i would say week and i would change it to w here i would change to month here i would change this to capital m so now if i go to week let's say and you can see that i am clicking on this next arrow and i'm going one week forward here i'm pressing this next icon and i'm going one month forward great okay so now i would added the same logic for the previous button but now instead of adding i am subtracting one day week month based on the view so now you can see that this button works as well now based on the view i would like to show some text which would basically tell me the date i have selected so if it's a month i would want to show the date in a particular format if it's a week so i would want to show the range between the days in which the week is present and if it's a day i would want to show the day here with a particular format so three separate formats for the three dates based on the view i've selected i would want to do that I would, and i would format it using moment so let's do that so i've made a date text variable and i've placed the text variable there here i'm saying that if the view is day then i want to show the date in this format now this format is basically the day in verbal format so thursday friday whatever then the month and then the day in digit format so you can see that it says monday october 10th very intuitive way for displaying a particular day now in this case i have basically done the same thing but for week and month so for the week i am basically getting the date which is at present the start of week and the end of week and i'm displaying the month and the date in digits and the same format for the two date so now you can see that for this particular week it says october 9 to october 15 this is a pretty nice way to show a week and similarly for month i'm just displaying the month name and the full year so full year would mean the year in four digits so if i go to month you can see that it says october 2022 great now basically i would want that when i click on that today date i'm shifted to the today date so that is pretty simple to do i will just say on click is equal to i want to set the date to moment so just calling the moment constructor means that i'm referring to today and i will then convert it to date because i have to convert it to date so now if i click on today you can see that it gets shifted to february 2024 which is the month right now and you know the current week and the current day now another thing is that i want that when i click on a particular date in this calendar i get shifted to that date inside the big calendar because obviously using these arrows is not an intuitive way to do that i would if i want to let's say go two years back i would have to click on this arrow countless number of times in order to go two years back so i want that using this small calendar i can select a date and then that particular date gets shown on the big calendar so let's do that okay so i'm using a date picker from rack date picker obviously 
if you are using material you can use its date picker doesn't matter so i'll say selected should be date and where date is the state and here i am getting the date from in the on change and i will just set the date to whatever date i'm getting so now let's say i want to go to january 2024 10 and now you can see that i am shifted to that particular week and this particular day similarly i want to go back to february 2024 and let's say i want to go to the week which is in right now i get shifted to this week and that's really great now i want to enable zooming in this calendar so i want that using this zoom bar i can zoom in zoom out on this calendar so that I, I can view an information which i want to if it requires zooming in or zooming out so let's add that okay so here i have set the state so i will just do set zoom zoom in the on change and here i will pass the value and now i have added the zoom state but now i want to zoom and zoom out the calendar based on the state change so let's add the logic for that so basically I have used the CSS and JS library, which is Emotion React. You can use any CSS and JS library you want, but basically based on the zoom value, so zoom is an array. I'm basically getting the first number of it and I'm multiplying it with 24. You can use any value here. And I'm basically changing the height of RBC time slot group. So basically this is the height of the time slots. So based on the zoom value, if I am moving the bar to the right, I'm increasing the zoom value. It would basically zoom in and zoom out based on that so let's look at that so now you can see that when i am moving this range slider it is zooming in to the calendar it's maximizing it and it is basically a pretty great tool added in the toolbar and now i have implemented a great functionality inside the calendar now i want to add a context menu in the time slots so the reason for adding a context menu can be that you know maybe i have a form for creating an appointment and i want that i right click on any particular slot and I select on add appointment option and the appointment form opens but with the time slot and the resource pre-selected so if there is a resource right now I haven't got a resource here so let's add that okay so for displaying a context menu I will use the time slot wrapper so I will display a custom time slot wrapper in which I am attaching the on context menu handler and whenever I will right click on any time slot I, this particular on context menu function would be called and I will add the necessary logic for showing the pop-up at that particular place with the time selection and everything. So let's add that. Okay, so I have basically an initialized state here. So the state would be of the type X position, Y position. So basically this would be used to position that context menu wherever I right click, then the selected time. So the time slot in which I clicked and then the resource ID. If there is a resource, then I want to get the resource ID of that particular resource. So basically here I have cloned the children. So whatever the time slot trapper has as a children, I've cloned it, but I've attached the on context menu here. So using the mouse event, I would basically set the state. So I will say set context menu info and then X position would be E dot client X. Y position would be E dot client y then the selected time would be the value so value is basically the time of that particular slot and then resource id and this resource would basically be the resource id so now i'm setting the state great now let's display a pop-up using this state okay so i've used uh, chakra ui's popover again if you are using material ui you will use the popover from that but basically what i've done is i'm saying if context menu state is there then this menu should be open and then i am placing this popover based on the y position and x position i selected and i'm giving it a z index of thousand so that it shows nicely above the calendar with the position fixed and here basically i am demonstrating what this would do what state it has set based on the right click i will do so let's say i go here i click on the slot you can see that i am showing a nice context menu and these are basically the options so new appointment new block out based on your wherever i am clicking so now if i click on new appointment you can see that you have selected 11 10 2022 9 a.m for resource undefined obviously right there isn't any resource so it says resource undefined but you can see that i clicked on the 9 a.m slot now again let's say i click here and click on add appointment you can see that says 11 a.m and the same day but let's change the day from you know 14 friday new appointment and you can see that says 1 p.m and 14 so you can use this to pre-populate your form if you want to and that's an amazing functionality also whenever i would click anywhere else i want to 
set the context menu information to undefined so that it hides the popover so now if i click anywhere else it uh, hides the popover okay another thing is uh, the steps and time slots so basically we have to use a combination of steps and time slots so right now i'm saying that the steps is five time slots are 60 divided by step so the product of step and time slots should always be 60 otherwise the calendar would break and when i say step five you can see if you zoom in you would be able to see that there are time slots of five minutes and when i do 60 divided by five it basically gives me 12 so there are 12 time slots of five minutes similarly if i change this five to ten now i'm saying that the step should be 10 but now the time slot should be six because you know 60 divided by 10 is six so that is how it goes okay so let's make the beautiful time slot design which i showed to you in the first section of this tutorial okay so basically the first step is that i want to target the rbc day slot and rbc time slot and i want to say that after this i want to insert an empty content but i want to give it a width of 100 percent and a border top of one pixel solid with this light pinkish color so now you can see that i have these lines and you know now the time slots are now the time slots are visible now there are six time slots of 10 minutes so what i want to do is based on the time slots and steps i have selected i want to basically have a different pattern of these lines so that it, it is more visible what the actual configuration of the calendar is now i won't go into very detail of what is happening here but basically i am targeting the rbc time slot the nth child of that time slot and after so basically you saw that here i added an empty content in the after of rbc time slot and i've given every line a width of 100 percent and you can see here that all lines have 100 percent width but i would give nth child based on you know the configuration i have for steps and time slots i want to provide different nth child and i want to modify the width so i have set the width of all after time slots to 100 percent but here i will change it based on the nth child i provide so this is the function which is doing that nothing fancy so time slot and child here i'll pass the nth child after this is the after and i am changing the width so basically for this particular tutorial i'm saying that uh, the time slots can either be 5 10 15 or 30 and that is what usually would be the case now here based on those time slots so 5 10 15 30 i am using this function and i'm passing different nth child here i'm saying every line which is 6 and plus 4 it should have a 25 percent width every line which is at 3 and plus 2 should have 12.5 percent width and also every line which is at 3 and plus 3 should have 12.5 percent width and let's see that in action so i will basically grab that object and i will always again use a css and js library to do that i'm using a motion react if you are using some other library you will use that here i would say time slot minute map here i'll pass the steps so i'll say steps so now you can see that for a step of 10 minutes and six time slots i'm showing a particular pattern now if i change the step to let's say five you will see a different pattern because i'm targeting different nth childs now you can see that there is a different pattern here if i change it to let's say 15 you will see a different pattern so now based on the time slots and steps i've selected i am targeting different nth childs and i'm changing the width of these lines and also change the color of these lines of time slots and it's looking very beautiful so this was the tutorial in which we customized the whole rack pick calendar i'm sure you like the tutorial if you have any questions you can comment down below and i'll answer each one of them if you want any further detailed explanation or tutorial regarding rack pick calendar i will be happy to make the tutorial for that as well as always like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye